science, the prefix mono means one or single, and the prefix poly means more than one or many. A polymer is a long chain of smaller chemical units called monomers. The polymer shown here is made up of 10 monomers, but polymers can consist of thousands or even millions of monomers. In biology, polymers consisting of monomers, called nucleotides, are very important. These are called polynucleotides. Two very important polynucleotides are DNA and RNA. Here we'll concentrate on DNA, which is an abbreviation for deoxyribonucleic acid. Now we'll take a more detailed look at the nucleotides that make up DNA. This shows the chemical structure of one nucleotide of the polynucleotide DNA. Now we'll concentrate on one part on the left side of this molecule. This is called the phosphate group. It consists of a phosphorus atom surrounded by oxygen atoms. Hydrogen atoms can bond to the oxygen atoms with a negative charge. And sometimes an OH is shown up here rather than an O negative. Now we'll return to the whole nucleotide. This time we'll concentrate on this part of the nucleotide. This is a 5 carbon sugar called deoxyribose. When deoxyribose is by itself and not part of a larger molecule, it has OH groups attached as shown here. When looking at this type of structural formula, it's important to realize that in organic chemistry, carbon atoms are by far the most common atoms in molecules. So to simplify structures, we can just show the structures with straight lines, and it is assumed that each point of intersection of the straight lines represents a carbon atom, as shown by the arrows on here. So if we had depicted all five carbon atoms with the letter C, the structure would look like this. So from now on, when you see a chemical structure with just straight lines, assume that every point of intersection represents a carbon atom. The carbon atoms in deoxyribose are numbered in a very specific way. This carbon atom is designated 1 prime. This is the carbon atom on deoxyribose that's connected to the group on the right side of the nucleotide. We proceed in a clockwise direction, and the next carbon atom is called 2 prime. This one is called 3 prime. The 3 prime carbon is important to remember because it's the carbon atom in a nucleotide that bonds to other nucleotides, as we'll see later. It's the one near the bottom. This carbon atom is called 4 prime. This is the fifth carbon on deoxyribose called 5 prime. It is the carbon atom outside of the five membered ring. This 5 prime carbon is also important as it is the carbon atom in deoxyribose that's bonded to the phosphate group in the nucleotide. Looking at the whole nucleotide again, this time we'll concentrate on the group on the right. This is what we call a base. And because it contains a number of nitrogen atoms, we can also call it a nitrogenous base. If this was a single molecule rather than being part of a nucleotide, it would have a hydrogen atom here. And it would be called adenine. So to summarize, our nucleotide consists of three major parts, a phosphate group, a sugar called deoxyribose, and a nitrogenous base. Remember the phosphate group is connected to the 5 prime carbon of deoxyribose, and the base is connected to its 1 prime carbon. The base shown here in this nucleotide is adenine. Adenine is only one of four bases found in the nucleotides of DNA. The four nitrogenous bases are adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Note that the groups with the N and the two H's can also be depicted simply as NH2, which we'll see in other models. The two bases consisting of five and six membered rings joined together are called purines. These are adenine and guanine. The two bases consisting of only six membered rings are called pyrimidines. These include thymine and cytosine. If we look more closely at adenine, we see that this hydrogen atom is attached directly to a nitrogen atom. 
Hydrogen atoms that are attached directly to a nitrogen or oxygen atom have a relatively high partial positive charge. This is indicated by the lowercase Greek letter called delta, with a plus sign shown in purple above the H. Now we'll look at this nitrogen atom colored blue. Nitrogen atoms and compounds tend to carry a partial negative charge, indicated by the green delta minus written below the N here. Looking at the base thymine, we see it also has a hydrogen atom bonded directly to a nitrogen. This means it has a partial positive charge. Now let's look at this oxygen atom on thymine. It is known that oxygen atoms in compounds carry partial negative charges. This is indicated by the green delta minus written above the blue O atom here. Notice that the positive H on adenine and the negative O on thymine will directly line up with each other. And at the same time, the positive H on thymine also lines up directly with the negative N on adenine. Positive and negative charges attract one another, and the dashed lines represent two attractive forces between a molecule of adenine and a molecule of thymine. These attractive forces tend to pull the molecules together. This forms what are known as hydrogen bonds. Although weaker than covalent bonds, they are relatively strong bonds which tend to hold the bases adenine and thymine together. We've shown them here as dotted lines. Now we'll look at two nitrogenous bases, guanine and cytosine. Notice the two red hydrogen atoms that guanine has and the red hydrogen atom cytosine has that are all attached directly to nitrogen atoms. This means that all three of these hydrogen atoms carry a partial positive charge. The other hydrogen atoms connected to the nitrogens also have a positive charge, but we'll just concern ourselves with the three that we colored red. Remember nitrogen and oxygen atoms in compounds carry a partial negative charge. Let's concentrate on these nitrogen and oxygen atoms that we've colored blue. We'll use the delta minus to show that each of these blue atoms has a partial negative charge. The three dashed lines show how these positive charges and negative charges line up perfectly between guanine and cytosine. These dashed lines all represent attractive forces between guanine and cytosine. Notice there are three this time. These three attractive forces tend to pull the bases guanine and cytosine together. We see that three hydrogen bonds form between the bases guanine and cytosine. The exact shapes and exact positions of hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms on these two bases make them fit perfectly together and form hydrogen bonds. Just remember that guanine always pairs up with cytosine. Recall that the bases adenine and thymine also fit together perfectly to form two hydrogen bonds. Remember that the base adenine always pairs up with the base thymine. Here is a diagram of a nucleotide with the base adenine. Notice this is written with the phosphate group on the top left. Also notice that the 5' prime carbon is above the 3' prime carbon. Here is a diagram of a nucleotide with the base guanine. Notice this is also written with the phosphate group on the top left. Again, the 5' prime carbon is above the 3' prime carbon. Here is a nucleotide in which thymine is the base. Again, notice the positions of the phosphate group and the 5' prime and 3' prime carbon atoms on the sugar. You may recall in the model we used before that, thymine had a CH3 group attached to its ring. In this model, the single solid line represents a carbon atom with three hydrogens, or a CH3 group. Just two different ways of representing the same thing. Here is a nucleotide with the base cytosine. Now we'll consider two nucleotides. The top one has the base adenine and the bottom one has the base cytosine. An H from the top nucleotide and an OH from the bottom one combine to form water and the two nucleotides bond together. We'll discard the water molecule. Now we'll take the dinucleotide we made and introduce another nucleotide below it. The nucleotide on the bottom has the base thymine designated by a green T. As the top molecule loses an H and the bottom molecule loses an OH, they move together and join to form a molecule with three nucleotides. 
will discard the water molecule that was formed. After adding another nucleotide with guanine, we end up with this polynucleotide chain. Notice on this chain that a 5' prime carbon is on the top left and a 3' prime carbon is on the bottom left. Now we're going to add another chain of nucleotides beside this one. Recalling the base pairing rules, remember that cytosine must pair up with guanine. Adenine must pair up with thymine, guanine must pair up with cytosine, and thymine must pair up with adenine. We'll bring in a chain on the right that has the bases in this order, and we'll move the chains together like this. We see that the bases from the left and right strand are now lined up perfectly to form hydrogen bonds between the pairs, as shown by the orange dashed lines. It is these hydrogen bonds that hold the left side and right side together. What we've made is a small molecule of DNA. A DNA molecule consists of two strands. This is the strand on the left, and this is the strand on the right. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds in the center. Notice the strand on the right has the 3' prime carbon on the top and the 5' prime carbon on the bottom. This is just the opposite of the strand on the left. If we draw an arrow from the 5' prime carbon to the 3' prime carbon on the left strand, it points downward. But if we draw an arrow from the 5' prime carbon to the 3' prime carbon on the right strand, it is pointing upward. The two strands of a DNA molecule are said to be anti-parallel. This means they are aligned in opposite directions. As you can see, this anti-parallel arrangement allows the bases to line up perfectly to form hydrogen bonds. Remember, this is a phosphate group, and this is a sugar called deoxyribose. So what we've outlined in dark red are what we call the phosphate sugar backbones of DNA. If the molecule is compared to a ladder, these would be the vertical rails of the ladder. In the center of the molecule are the complementary base pairs. Here's the complementary base pair adenine and thymine. Here's another complementary base pair cytosine and guanine. Now we've shaded in all four complementary base pairs in this molecule. If this is compared to a ladder, the base pairs form the rungs of the ladder. This points out both the phosphate sugar backbones and the bases in the center of the DNA molecule. This particular model has four base pairs. However, real DNA molecules are very much longer. It has been determined that all of the DNA in the 23 chromosomes of a human gamete contain about 3.2 billion base pairs, and all of these are either AT or CG. The structure of DNA is often depicted in a more simplified model like this. Here are the two antiparallel phosphate sugar backbones, and the complementary base pairs are shown in the center of this model. Notice that adenine pairs up with thymine and cytosine pairs up with guanine. Notice there are two hydrogen bonds between adenine and the thymine bases. We see that there are three hydrogen bonds between the bases cytosine and guanine. All of the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs hold the two strands of DNA together. Due to all the forces between atoms and the atoms trying to form natural bond angles, the two strands tend to coil together and form what is called a double helix. This model also shows the double helix structure of DNA. Here we're looking at a section of DNA. This section of DNA we've shown here represents what we call a gene. A gene is a section of DNA which contains the code or the blueprint for making a protein. The code is carried by the order of the colored sections or the bases shown in the center of the spirals. 